Hello, welcome back everyone. Today in this video, we are going to just scrape the surface and try out what would be considered Peruvian food. So, come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So why did I say it like that? Why did I say we're just gonna scrape the surface? Well, because what you would consider to be Peruvian food is, uh, is widely, widely varied. The cuisine, and Lima, Lima is known for its food. One of the great food cities of the world. And like I said, very widely varied cuisine. There are some things that people outside of Peru would think of as like typical Peruvian food. Um, but like for example, one of the most popular types of food in, uh, and most popular widespread types of restaurants in Lima is Chinese food, chifa. Like we mentioned in our video about Barrio Chino and about Chinese people in, um, in Peru. So it's a little more complex than it seems. There is not one specific type of food that you would really consider to be like Peruvian food. The most would probably be what they call here criollo, and that would be considered like typical Peruvian food. And we're gonna try some of that. But first, we're gonna get another thing that's very typical here in Peru, and that is ceviche. Let's do it. So what is ceviche? Well, basically it's uh, raw fish that's marinated in like an acidic marinade, usually like a citrus, like lime juice, but also, um, you know, there's like usually cilantro and other stuff in there, uh, onions, uh, delicious, delicious flavors that they marinate the, the seafood in. Now, sometimes you'll hear people say that like the acidity or the, um, the citrus like cooks the fish. It doesn't actually do that. It sort of denatures the proteins so that the fish sort of has a texture that's similar to cooked fish, but it doesn't actually like kill any bacteria. So you have to be really careful with ceviche the same way you're gonna be careful with like sushi because you are eating raw fish. You wanna make sure that you go to a place that is like clean um, and that is like uh, the, the fish is prepared fresh and it's not sitting around uh, a long time in between when they prepare it and when you eat it. So make sure you do that when you're getting ceviche. But another thing about ceviche here in Peru is it's actually like declared by UNESCO as a uh, food item of cultural heritage of Peru. It is the one of the like premier, premier Peruvian, quote unquote, Peruvian foods. So um, I'm pretty excited to try it. I will say though, I have tried ceviche before. Uh, not in Peru though. This will be my first time trying ceviche in Peru. And we're going to this place, Corner, Corner Marino, Corner Marino. Came uh, very highly recommended, so we'll see how it is. So as you can see, the place is uh, very nice inside, very clean, open kitchen, which is nice. You can see the chefs doing their work. They gave us a little like a snack of some roasted corn and dried plantains. They gave us these sauces that are going to go with uh, the fish that we ordered. And we decided to get a beer, Pilsen, the beer of the people, and also uh, some chicha morada, the famous purple drink made from purple corn here in Peru. It's a decent sized menu. We ended up ordering ceviche that also comes with fried fish. So we got ceviche and fried fish, and oh, here it is. Ah, see. It looks really delicious. The ceviche looks and smells very fresh. The fried fish came out crispy and hot. Um, really, really excited to dive in and try this out. Total cost for it was 35 soles, which is about $10. Ceviche, it also came with this like, uh, it was like, like a sweet potato, I think, or maybe like a sweet uh, yucca or something like that. It was very good, uh, quite tasty. And the fish, the fried fish was cooked perfectly, perfectly, not overcooked, very, very delicious. Well, 
Well, that was pretty good. I mean, that was really good, actually. Um, you know, I had mentioned before that if you get ceviche, you want it in a place that's like clean and uh, they prepare everything fresh. And that place uh, definitely was that. The restaurant was really, very, very, very clean. Um, the kitchen was like an open kitchen. You could see them preparing everything. And the fish itself smelled, tasted, and looked very, very fresh. So it was really good. We uh, also got some fried fish that came with that. Um, the fish itself, the ceviche and the fried fish, ended up being like 35 soles, which is like 10 bucks, very cheap, uh, but very good. And with it, we got chicha morada. What is chicha morada? Well, chicha and morada, morada just means purple. Chicha is like um, a drink that's made from boiled corn. And chicha is actually like has a long history. It goes way back, way before the Spanish were even here in South America. And there's different versions of chicha all over South America. And in a lot of places, it's uh, alcoholic because originally it was like a, a fermented corn beer, basically, that uh, was slightly alcoholic. Now, here in Peru, chicha morada, not alcoholic. But in some places, uh, they still do chicha that is alcoholic. And. Uh, the interesting thing about Chicha Morada is it's super popular all around here, and you can get it, um, you know, pretty much anywhere. They even have a bottled version of it, like this, that you can just buy in stores. Um, and I actually kind of like the bottled version, but they also sell like a powdered version that you can just mix with water and make sort of like your own Chicha Morada, instant Chicha Morada. Uh, but you got to be really careful if you're not from Peru. Um, people whose stomachs are not used to the tap water here. There's certain bacteria in the tap water. So if you get chicha morada that's an instant, that's made with tap water, you might get sick from it. So you gotta make sure when you get in chicha morada that it's some place where they've made it, um, you know, naturally, they've made it homemade because it, it's boiled for several hours and that kills any bacteria that's in it. Um, it's boiled and then it's cooled down. So if you're getting chicha morada, definitely make sure that you're getting it um, from a place that's, that's, uh, that does it, you know, naturally, homemade. If you remember back, I don't know if you've seen it, but we did a previous video from the uh, public markets in Santiago, Chile, when we were there in Chile. And we had mistakenly thought that uh, Chicha Morada was actually Chilean. Uh, una cosita. Hay uh, una bebida, pero no recuerdo cómo se llama. Es uh, una bebida chilena. Es uh, morada. Creo que es hecho de um, maíz. Pero no, no chilena, es peruana. Oh, es peruana? La chicha, chicha morada. But it's not, of course. It's Peruvian. And uh, in that video, when we weren't able to find it there in that market, well, asked a bunch of people. They all seemed to say like, oh yeah, you can get it over there. And then I'd go over there and then they didn't have it. And uh, those nice women explained to us what it was. La chicha, la chicha morada, ¿con qué la hacen? ¿Cómo se llama el maíz? El maíz morado. Viene con limón, primero se, hace sí, este, sí. se hierve, ¿verdad? Sí. El maíz morado, la canela, el clavito de dolor, lo hierves. Y, y, en la uh, primera agüita, lo cola, le echas un poquito más de agua y le pones, le rayas piña y le pones sí. este limón. Well, I said, you know, I guess we're going to have to go to Peru to get Chicha Morada. Maybe if sometime in the future we go to Peru, that'll be a video. We'll go to Peru and we'll try Chicha Morada there in Peru. And, well, here we are. We're in Peru. But, it wasn't the only reason I wanted to come to Peru. Lots of other reasons, too. In addition to having all that, we got that Pilsen beer, which uh, I've been told is like a uh, like a Peruvian beer. It's the, it's the beer of the people, I guess. So, you know, it's like, um, like Quilmes was in Argentina or like Cristal was in Chile. It's that kind of beer. Founded, the beer company founded back here in, in Cajau, which is like the city right next to Lima in 1863, I think. So long, long time ago. And uh, it's the kind of beer that I see like all over the place in bars, on signs for bars and stuff like that. So it seems like it's the beer of the people. So we had a real, I guess, Peruvian, meal right there. We had ceviche, we had chicha morada, and we had pilsen, the beer of the people. Anyway, I'm pretty full, so you're not going to see me again until the next meal. But the next thing we're going to get, well, I'm not going to spoil it. Check in. Stay with the video and 
you'll see the next thing that we're gonna get pretty soon. All right, so next up we're gonna try Anticucho. Anticucho, what is Anticucho? Anticucho is like uh, various organ meats, all uh, grilled and seasoned and grilled. Apparently it's a, it's a, like a cuisine that goes way, way back before even the Spanish uh, showed up here. In fact, a lot of the cuisines that we're gonna try are stuff that happened like go way back to before the Spanish showed up here. Very, very old. The place we're going is right down the street here. It uh, seems to be like a pretty popular place. It's an Antecucheria. Uh, it's right here, actually. That place right there, Doña Pochita, Antecucheria. Let's go check it out. So our Anticucho came with skewered beef hearts, uh, also some beef tripe, uh, beef intestine, and chicken hearts. You know, all perfectly seasoned. It came with uh, some golden potatoes and uh, corn, and also some hot sauce. And we decided to also get it with an Inca Cola. Now, Inca Cola, and Inca Cola is super popular. If, if Chicha Morada is very popular, Inca Cola, I'd say, is potentially even more popular around Peru. Um, in fact, uh, it was started as a, I think it was some, some British guy, I can't remember his name right now, I'll put his name in the subtitle, but um, he came up with the, the formula and started the company of Inca Cola and started making Inca Cola way, way back in the day, back in like the 20s or 30s here in Peru. And it became super popular. It's the most popular soda in Peru, for sure. A lot of the times, if you go to like a restaurant, they'll have two kinds of soda, Coca-Cola and Inca-Cola. And Inca-Cola is insanely popular here. And it's not just popular here. When I was in Chile, um, it was popular there too. You could buy it in Chile. And it's bottled by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola actually owns the Inca-Cola brand pretty much everywhere in the world outside of Peru. In Peru, it's still owned by like, I want to say the original company um, that it was owned by um, when it was first started. But it's super, super popular. What does it taste like? Well, it tastes like bubble gum. I'm not going to lie. It tastes like bubble gum. But it sounds kind of um, gross, but it's actually quite delicious. Is it really sweet? Yes. Does it taste like bubble gum? Yes. Was I surprised at how much I liked it? Yes. I really do like it and I'm kind of addicted to it now, not gonna lie. All right, back here in the apartment where we're staying and man, that Anticucho was really, really good. I, you know, you gotta get over the mental hurdle of uh, the fact that you're eating like beef heart and chicken hearts and gizzards and tripe and intestine and all of that but I mean look honestly all of it is really really well seasoned it's grilled so it has that like smoky flavor they serve it with some hot sauce that you can put on it I really really liked it I wasn't able to eat all of it I actually got like some of it over here in the fridge um, that I'm gonna like honestly heat up and eat later uh, seriously really really good would go back 100% uh, but unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to do that today because um, I'm super full uh, but there's definitely more food that we need to try and we're gonna do that on another day but it's all gonna be part of this video so when you next find me I will be out there trying some more delicious Peruvian cuisine on a different day hello we're back we're back on a new day to eat more food and we're gonna go and we're gonna try two things that actually I know a place where we can get both of them in the same place uh, one chicken uh, roast chicken in uh, Peru is very very popular and a lot of times they actually serve it with like a side of fried rice which um, is interesting like blending the Chinese food which is super popular with um, like criollo food here in Peru we're gonna get that and another thing called salchich salchicha papas and that is really similar to something that we already tried actually in Santiago in Chile the chorillana uh, it's basically like french fries with uh, cut up sausage on it um, and it's very popular here it's like a popular kind of like cheap dish that you can get very hearty fills you up so i'll teach you papas and the place we're going to try it is right here Porgeria fogata and uh they have both of these things here so we're going to order way too much food and probably have to end up taking some of it home with us but let's go That 
was really, really tasty. And we definitely ended up taking half of it to go because it was a lot of food. And uh, it was a lot of food for really cheap too. Like not gonna lie, both of those plates plus the beer was like 10 bucks. Um, so quite a good price, honestly. Really, really good. Anyway, one more thing that we have to try. And uh, we're not gonna do it today because I'm super full. But it's something that we definitely have to try while we're here in Peru. And uh, trigger warning for anyone who ever had a pet guinea pig, well, you might want to skip ahead to the timestamp in the subtitle. For the rest of you, I'll see you soon. Okay, so for those of you who stayed, we're gonna go eat Kui. And Kui is guinea pig. We're gonna go eat a guinea pig. Um, Kui is a, uh, like a staple food in people's diets around this area of uh, South America, not just Peru, but also in like Bolivia, Ecuador. And it's been that way for literally thousands of years. So we can't come to Peru and not try it. We're gonna go try it. So come along, we'll try it out, and we'll let you know how it is. So we started off with a beer, and we drank that beer. And then in order to prepare ourselves, we got another beer. And well, we drank that other beer. I, I have to really mentally prepare myself for the fact that I'm about to eat a guinea pig. And there it is, in all of its deep fried glory. It came with a side of uh, salad made from onions and tomatoes and some nice golden potatoes. And yes, I did eat the whole thing. Okay, so, we ate it. We ate kui, we ate a guinea pig. And, uh, not gonna lie, I actually uh, drank more than a few of those beers also. So I'm a little buzzed right now. What is there to say about eating a guinea pig? Uh, I'll say this, one, it tasted like chicken. I know that's cliche, but it actually did. Specifically, it tasted like the like dark meat chicken from the part of the chicken that has like a lot of fat on it. Like the chicken wing, not the little drumette part, but the part, the part with the two bones. Honestly, it was a lot of just like fat and skin, really. There wasn't a lot of meat on it. Um, I would say if you're here and you wanna try it, just to say that you tried it, go for it. It doesn't taste gross or anything. When you look at it, you definitely can't deny what you're eating, for sure. I mean, it has little feet and claws and a head and everything, but um, it doesn't taste gross. And if you wanna try it, go for it. But I will say, because it's like sort of considered a delicacy, it is pretty expensive. And there isn't a lot of meat on it. So if you really want more bang for your buck, you know, get a nice piece of fish, like some chicken or something like that. Um, but I am glad that I tried it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Well, like I said, we've really only just scratched the surface of all the great food that there is to eat here in Peru, um, especially in a city like this in Lima. And I don't want people to think that everything around here is all, you know, organ meats and fried guinea pig. Um, that's definitely a part of it, but the, the food culture here is, is so amazing. You know, if, if that's not your thing, you're always going to be able to find, like, uh, you know, some place that has, like, a delicious uh, sandwich and a tamale or something like that. Some little mom-and-pop restaurant that'll serve you up a, a, a fish plate, you know, with, like, a salad and rice and maybe some golden potatoes on the side. Very, very tasty meal at a very, very good price. So, um, and you know, outside of the typical like Peruvian food, Lima is such a great food city, you're gonna be able to find all kinds of other great restaurants. Great Chinese restaurants everywhere. Great Japanese restaurants. You'll be able to find great Venezuelan restaurants and places that have burgers and pizza and all those things as well. So, um, 
even if you're not into like deep fried guinea pig, <laughs> I would say definitely, definitely you want to come to Lima for the food. The food in this city is spectacular. So I think that's going to be it for the video. I don't know what else there is to say. There's plenty more food to try, but if I tried to put all of it into one video, the video would be like eight hours long and uh, I'm not going to do that. But uh, I think you've seen just a little bit of what Lima has to offer as a food city and hopefully you enjoyed it. Stick around for future videos and we'll see you next time. Thank you.